I've tested all possible wattage settings for the Xbox LIX with its Ryzen Z2 Extreme from 7 up to 35 watt in gaming to learn about the efficiency and if the predefined performance modes silent, performance and turbo make any sense or if manually adjusting them is a good idea. But before we take a look at the results, I just want to make sure everyone is on the same page about what we actually have here. Now the AMD Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme is a relatively strong Strix Point CPU by AMD with 8 cores and 16 threads, while it sports 3 faster than 5 and 5 slightly slower than 5 C cores with up to 5 GHz. This so-called APU also includes an integrated graphics unit in form of the Radeon 890M with 16 compute units, which we've already seen in the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370 and 375. So it has 33% more compute units than the Radeon 780M in the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, while the CPU part is more comparable to a Ryzen AI 7 350, which means the CPU alone is basically as fast as the CPU part in the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, so it's not just a renaming of an existing chip, but a new combination just for gaming handhelds, which makes sense as 8 cores still is the sweet spot for most modern games. In fact, it's actually mostly on par with the Z1 Extreme, at least for the Cinebench R23 multicore benchmarks, as you can see in this graph. It actually seems slightly slower on most wattages, which could be either due to the margin of error or the fact that the Z2 Extreme has three faster, but also five slower than 5C cores. Considering the single core benchmark, however, where it only uses one of the faster than 5 cores, it is noticeably faster than the Z1 Extreme with around 1950 over 1750 points which is an improvement of 11% and single core speeds are important for gaming. If you're interested, I also have a dedicated video in which I compare the Z1 Extreme in the original ROG Ally with the AI Z2 Extreme in the new Xbox Ally X in two different performance modes and 10 games right here. By the way, in this machine the chip is also combined with 24GB of pretty fast and soldered LPDDR5X RAM with 8000 mega transfers per second and 8GB are pre-allocated by standard but can be adjusted as you wish. The IA version of the Z2 Extreme inside this Xbox Ally X also offers an NPU with up to 50 tops for which Microsoft and Asus actually promised some features in the future that are supposed to improve our gaming experience, but right now that is not ready yet. So the sustained power limit for the AI Z2 Extreme is 35W, while it can boost to higher 45W or supposedly 55W for a short boost window in this handheld. But as you'll see, you won't get a real performance improvement above around 25 to 30 watt here, which might be due to a memory bandwidth limitation or how the chip works in general. Now for the Xbox LIX, ASUS pre-configured three performance modes, whereas silent mode uses 13 watt, the performance mode uses 17 watt, and the turbo mode uses 25 watt on battery and 35 watt when the handheld is connected to a at least 65 watt USB-C charger. With the additional manual mode, we can freely configure the wattage for the whole APU from 7 up to 35 watt, which by the way also heavily affects the memory clock. Now I actually tested every possible wattage setting between 7 and 35 watt in gaming with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Why this game? Because it doesn't have a night and day cycle or any other events that would affect a consistent environment for the system to render and it's reacting pretty well to basically anything you change hardware-wise like the CPU power, the clocks, GPU power, RAM speed, etc. So just like back in the day for the Radeon 8060S in the Ryzen AI Max for this, I picked a fixed spot as you can see here in the game, locked in a specific viewing angle, adjusted the TDP settings and took notes. By the way, I was using 720p and medium settings this time, so I would be getting a bit more FPS overall, making the difference between two wattage steps actually more visible. And this is the curve that I got out of my results. The y-axis on the left representing the FPS, and the x-axis on the bottom the single wattage levels from 7 up to 35 watt. With this specific example, we can see that we need at least 12 watt for the chip to get playable 30 FPS. And interestingly, we can clearly see that something is happening once we step up to 13 watt, which is the Xbox Ally Access wattage for the silent mode. So either Asus chose this preset for a reason, or they themselves configured the chip that way. 
And spoiler, as we'll see in a bit, in this example, 13 watt isn't even the most efficient setting. So from around 40 to 20 watt, we get a pretty consistent improvement of around 2 to 3 FPS per additional watt, which is pretty good. Once we reach 20 watt, it's only 1 FPS per additional watt, up until 29 watt, where we now only are getting 3 more FPS for the 6 watt steps up to 35 watt. Overall, it's a pretty perfect curve, except for this little dent at around 12 to 13 watt, and the fact that 7 and 8 watt are only enough for really lighter games, but even that is more than enough for some titles, as shown in my previous video, where I've tested 50 games on this machine. An alternative sweet spot to the 17 watt performance mode or the 25 watt slash 35 watt turbo mode could be a manual 20 watt mode, which results in around 2.5 hours of battery runtime. And now here's a look at the efficiency curve, which shows us the FPS per watt for each wattage setting. And here we can see that the efficiency is vastly improving at exactly 13 watt. And it's even slightly higher at 14 and 15 watt in this specific example and stays at a high level up until around 20 watt before it starts to drop significantly. So efficiency wise, this is the sweet spot area where you can pick your desired wattage depending on what game you play. Also, please be aware that these slight fluctuations over here at the left might be within the margin of error, as the difference between single wattage steps is often pretty small. Overall, I think the biggest improvement of the Xbox LIX and its Ryzen Z2 Extreme is the efficiency at medium and lower wattages, which enables you to get better graphics at the same FPS or noticeably higher FPS with the same graphics as before with the Z1 Extreme in the original ROG Ally. While the Lunar Lake chip in the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus is pretty close to that and both are in a head-to-head -head race performance-wise, it's as good as it gets for these smaller mobile eye GPUs right now, and they only get beaten by the bigger Ryzen AI Max chips, even at medium or lower wattages. Okay, and now let's also have a quick look at the results of 3D Mark Firestrike at 10, 15, and 30 watt. And the same for 3D Mark Time Spy as well. And that's already all for today's video. I hope it was interesting and enlightening for you. If you like the content, make sure to like the video and or subscribe to the channel for more videos about laptop tech, gaming handhelds and more. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.